trapped on a small deserted island in the middle of the ocean after a plane crash, a couple eventually learns the shocking truth. A loving couple, Sarah and Jackson, sit at a bar and watch a video together. They met on the tropical island of Mauritius and spent an adventurous year together. Tonight is the last night we will spend together. In the morning the girl flies to London to start her new job. She offers Jackson to go with her, but he is happy to stay on the island. There was an awkward silence, and the boy offered Sarah another beer. After he leaves for a short time, Sarah decides to run away, not wanting to say goodbye. Jackson returns confused and tries to find his loved one. A year later, her destiny sends Sarah back to Mauritius, where her best friend's wedding takes place. Away from her job, the girl feels free again. She arrives at an old acquaintance Solomon's house on behalf of the bride, but at first glance there seems to be no one there. Sarah climbs over the fence and she is immediately attacked by an angry dog. The girl got scared and she climbed the fence again, but she luckily got out by the owner of the house. His assistant loads a case of rum into the girl's pickup truck for the upcoming celebration. Afterwards, Sarah meets up with Pascal and her other old friends to celebrate together as she did a year ago. The best friends decided to have a cocktail at Pascal's bar. According to the bride, the wedding will take place on nearby Rodriguez Island and will be taken by ferry early in the morning. Sarah admitted that she missed Mauritius for her and that memory always brings a smile to her face. Pascal asked a friend if he would like to stay here this time because his position allows him to work remotely. She says she's a girl needed in London, but there's a bit of suspicion in her voice. A boat approaches the pier from which Jackson emerges with his friends. Pascal announces that he has opened his own diving school on the island and has his girlfriend. Sarah is disappointed when she learns that her ex-partner will have to meet her before her wedding because he will be performing at the beach party that night. During her party, the girl cannot take her eyes off Jackson. After she finally musters up her courage, she decides to approach him first, which upsets his new girlfriend. Sarah tries to strike up a friendly conversation with her ex, but is met with cold answers. He decided to leave the party, but the girl didn't give up and offered to accompany him home. During the walk, Sarah manages to calm Jackson down and they go drinking together at his house. The girl openly flirts with the man and coquettishly wears a life jacket. Jackson playfully hits it on her. Thus, the two get closer, and the feelings between them flare up again. Sarah wanted a kiss, but Jackson managed to resist her temptation. He tells her from the bottom of his heart that he never wants to betray her again. After that, they start quarreling, remembering all their mistakes and resentments of each other. During a heated argument, the two get even closer and share a passionate kiss. In the morning after a stormy night, Sarah decides to run away again without saying a word. Her enraged Pascal calls her and tells her that he has missed her only ferry to her wedding. A desperate Sarah arrives at her friend Freddy's house who is older than her. He takes a light plane to the party and agrees to take her girl with him. The girl was very surprised to find out that Jackson also agreed to go to her wedding with Freddy on her plane. After getting a case of rum, the three board the plane. Sarah awkwardly tries to talk to Jackson, but he ignores her after the events of the morning. During the flight, Freddy invites Sarah to sit in her co-pilot seat while Jackson sleeps. They begin a conversation about relationships, and the man mentions his wife, who recently died after a long illness. He tells the girl that her love isn't always easy, alluding to her and Jackson. Sarah takes flying lessons from Freddy, so she suggests that Freddy take over. He reminds her of her basic safety rules. After receiving her final instructions, Sarah disengages her autopilot and prepares to take control of the plane. Jackson awoke to find a loose gas cylinder lying around at his feet. Suddenly Freddy coughed convulsively and began gasping for air. Jackson is about to tighten the cylinder, but suddenly Sarah hears desperate cries that an old man is having a heart attack. The medicine didn't help, and the next moment the lead pilot fell headfirst into the steering wheel and the plane went into free fall. The cylinder comes off again, leaving a crack in the plane's windshield. Jackson manages to get to Freddy and drag him off the steering wheel. Sarah manages to correct the plane and gain altitude just before it crashes into the sea. 
Jackson drags Freddy's body and tries to revive him. But precious rescue time was lost, and the man covered his breathless body with a jacket and burst into tears. After taking the chief pilot's seat, it turned out that the plane's GPS was out of order and the couple's mobile phones were also not connected to their mobile phones, leaving them unaware of where they were. Jackson tries to communicate with the outside world by radio with Sarah. No one gets in touch, and the couple panics even more. Their only hope is an autopilot that will take them to Rodriguez Island. However, it soon turned out that the broken cylinder had damaged critical equipment in the steering system, including the autopilot. To make matters worse, the tank is only half full. After learning the basics of flying from Freddy, Sarah must get the plane to safety. Having calculated an approximate route using her compass, the girl turns the plane 180 degrees. The couple are surprised to see a storm approaching. The plane began to shake, but Jackson is confident he will be able to navigate through the storm clouds in time. Eventually, they were able to contact the local air traffic controller, Samuel. The couple contact him for help. The air traffic controller says we must turn around immediately or we will run out of fuel for the trip. In order to land as quickly as possible, we must fly westward through the storm. Jackson is not happy with this prospect and asks if the plane can be landed on water instead. Communication is cut off as the storm approaches. The couple had no choice but to dive into the middle of the storm. Lightning flashes before them and dark clouds envelop them. Jackson told Sarah to sit in the main pilot's seat so he could see the instruments clearly. A girl faces a difficult task. You must ensure that the plane remains at the same altitude despite bad weather. A lightning strike rocks the plane violently and throws the instruments out of order. Fearing a fall, Sarah decides to gain her altitude to fly over the storm. A panic Jackson tries to dissuade her girl from her crazy idea, but she disobeys the girl. After all, they are above storm clouds and rejoice in clear skies. But the euphoria soon ends. As Freddy warned, they will get altitude sickness. The plane began to dive while the girl lost her consciousness. Jackson managed to bring her back to her senses, but Sarah was unable to stop her falling. Through an incredible twist of fate, they managed to survive and level the flying machine to the ground. However, his compass broke during the fall and he was permanently off course. Jackson remembers how to assemble a compass by improvised means. He takes a magnetized needle and shoots it into a liquid containing alcohol. They manage to locate themselves and Sarah turns west again. Ultimately, the couple managed to escape the storm, but ended up expending too much fuel in doing so. Sarah finds that one of hers in the tank is almost completely empty and she decides to switch to another full tank. However, the fuel level begins to drop rapidly and never recovers over time. Jackson suspects the fuel tank was damaged during the storm, causing the malfunction. His continued desire to find the cause of the bug and fix it made him decide to escape. Meanwhile, Sarah tries to convince her to give up on the idea, but she realizes that without fuel she has no chance of survival. Ms. Jackson braced herself with a rope and asked her little girl to slow her down. He cautiously crawled out of the plane and, after several unsuccessful attempts, reached the engine compartment. There he finds a gap and seals it with tape. But the next moment he accidentally slips and falls, injuring his arm. Ms. Jackson managed to cling to the crossbar with her good arm, and the girl scurried to the man's aid, locking her will in place. His lifeline got caught in the handle of the plane. Sarah cuts the rope and helps him climb into the cockpit. The girl succeeded in luring Jackson indoors after her great efforts. She examines his arm and is concerned to find that it has a severe fracture. After treating her open wound with alcohol, she distracts the man and extends her arm. Then the girl applies her tourniquet with the help of a first aid kit. After the couple recovers from their stress, they return to the dashboard and see that there is only 5% fuel left in the tank. Sarah suggests losing weight to buy time and save fuel. First, Sarah throws away all her seats and luggage, attracting the attention of boats passing below. Soon, the two realize that this is not enough and stare at her breathless body of Freddy together. The girl decided to take a desperate measure. 
she ripped the Happy Freddy family photo off the dashboard and slipped it into the man's breast pocket. Sarah moves the old man's body to the exit and pushes him to the ground with her tears streaming down her face. Next, the girl tries to dispose of a box of alcohol, but Jackson suddenly has the idea of using rum as fuel. A badly wounded man is unable to refuel the tank, so Sarah decides to continue her mission. She summoned her courage to go outside and climb onto the roof of the plane. Once on the wing, she opens the fuel tank and begins pouring the alcohol given to her by Jackson. After emptying all the bottles of rum, Sarah tried to stand up and she miraculously avoided her fall. It's worth taking her risk and her fuel level increases slightly. Jackson tells the girl that she has found a small island on the way. He tells Sarah to return immediately as she may have no other chance of her rescue. The girl decides to listen to the man and sits in the main pilot's seat. They tell the dispatcher their intentions and hope he hears them. Sarah turns her plane around again, but she still can't find the island after several minutes of flying. And worst of all, the fuel supply runs out completely, and the plane's engines stop working. The plane begins gliding through the air and flies for a while. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Sarah decides to apologize to her ex-partner for the pain her actions have caused him. Jackson also apologized that he was selfish and didn't respect her lover's choices. Suddenly Jackson notices a small island in the window. The happy girl turned her plane around and started gliding towards land. She attempts to land, but she completely loses control of her plane at low altitude. Ms. Jackson desperately yells at the dispatcher to report the emergency landing. Despite Sarah's best efforts, the plane fell into the water and overturned. The hull quickly fills with water, leaving the couple trapped on board. Sarah manages to open the door and swim up to the surface, but she realizes Jackson is nowhere near her. She dives at the man and she finds him unconscious and trapped in the wing of a sunken plane. The girl pulled a life jacket from the cockpit and draped it around the man's neck before the plane sank to the bottom of the ocean. They swam to the surface and Sarah pulled the man's body ashore. She gave him CPR and Jackson regained consciousness and vomited up sea water. Exhausted, the couple collapsed on the sand and were overjoyed to be rescued. They doze off for a while and then find that the land around them is almost completely flooded. Sarah becomes hysterical when she finds out that her chances of survival have dropped to zero. She looks around her frantically for her rescue, but all that surrounds her is the vast ocean. Gradually, the couple begins to feel the ground under their feet. Sarah begins to cry, and she decides that this will save her life. Exhausted and drained of his strength, Jackson realizes he has absolutely no chance of survival and offers his lover to wear a life jacket. Sarah, however, refused, saying they were a team and would be with him until the end. Jackson's wound opens, attracting the attention of several sharks. The two confess their love and feel the end is near. However, at that time, a small fishing boat that heard a rescue signal approaches. Sarah Jackson uses the last of her strength to pull the boat. They managed to board the ship before the shark caught up. The surviving couple vow never to say goodbye or kiss again. End. In the midst of adversity, facing the trials of nature's wrath and their own past mistakes, Sarah and Jackson's journey brought them to the brink of despair. Through determination, sacrifice, and a renewed bond, they discovered the strength of their love and the resilience of the human spirit, emerging as survivors and eternal partners, forever bound by the profound experiences that united them.